ago. Um, I told somebody I don't like to carry these things around, but in order for our recording to come through, we need to have a microphone. Uh, all of my uh, lapel mics are, are messed up, tore up, and so we're going to, they float me some on order, so we'll get that done, and, and Lord, take care of all that. Uh, just want to remind you, uh, the, the day we got our bulletins back, if you like bulletins, all the information will be in the bulletins. Uh, so pay attention to that. Also, uh, Brother Thomas Carraway is with us today, and we'll talk more about him and to him later. Uh, but we thank you, Brother Thomas, for coming and joining with us. We we all share prayers with uh, Cherry Grove Church this morning. I'm sure they're having a very emotional uh, meeting, but yet a meeting where God's going to show up mightily, I'm sure. So let's be much in prayer for them. If you have your Bible, I want to invite you for the few minutes that we spend together I want to invite you to look at, at, at a scripture found in Jude. It's Jude verses 3 and 4, and it'll be on the screen if you don't have your Bibles, but if you have your Bibles, I invite you to open them up and to read it from there anyway because, uh, you know, sometimes we, we get in the habit of not carrying our Bibles. A Bible left at church ain't worth a nickel to you during the week, amen? And so I just encourage you uh, this uh, to just... Uh, take the word the Bible said, we ought to hide it in our heart that we sin not against him. Jude, verses 3 and 4. I got there. I hadn't marked my place, but I'm there. I found my way. Amen? And uh, here, here's my thought. I jotted down a thought, and, and I, I just, uh, I don't know where this is going other than the fact that I, we need to hear it because God said do it. The Bible, I, uh, here's what I jotted down. I said, what God have done is done, uh, and no sign of changing is found in him. What God has done is done, and no sign of changing in Him. And uh, when we uh, get into our message, I think you'll understand that a little bit more. But in Jude, I, re I told y'all I read Jude every day except Sunday. So uh, I read it every day, every morning except Sunday. And, uh, and it blesses me, but uh, now I'm beginning to realize why I'm reading it every day. Uh, verse 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of, of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained, ordained to, this, to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. And, and listen, I just want to kind of uh, get on the run right here and kind of talk about this because this is a very important me uh, message, or it is to me today, uh, in light of all that we see and in light of all that we are hearing about and all that is going on in our world. Never before have we seen all the things that are going on in our world, but the Lord told us that they would come. What's done, what God has done is done. And, and that's, I just want you to keep that thought in your mind just kind of seal your heart with it today. What God has done is done. Uh, because all these things going on around us are, are terrible things. I mean, they're, it's terrible everywhere you go. I mean, we're having to meet, pray over law enforcement. We're doing all kind of things. Uh, we, there's trouble in the streets. There's trouble in the homes. There's trouble in the churches. There's trouble everywhere. I don't know anywhere today where they're in trouble. Amen? And so uh, we want to talk about that just for a little while and talk about why things are the way they are, why we have gotten to the point and place where we are and what we need to do about it before it's too late. I, I just want you to understand something. The uh, reason uh, this thought came to me, uh, what God has done is done, is because God had a was a way. God laid out the way long before you and I were ever born. In fact, the Bible says of God that before the foundations of the world, he had already done in his mind everything that was going to be done. Uh, God already had it laid out. He didn't come and, and a surprise jumped up before him and he fixed it. God had it planned uh, all the way, even before the foundation of the world. And so that's what we need to remember. I want to ask you a question then. In light of what I just said, in light of the fact that God had it done before, why in God's name do we, you, want it changed? 
Why, why do we want to change what God has set forth and what God has said is good? Why do we want to change it? Why do we want to go out of here, out of this building, go to our homes, go to our jobs, go, and sin? Why do we want to go out there and walk ungodly when we know that God didn't ordain it? When we know that God said that we ought to live righteously, that God made a way for us, and he brought grace to us in Jesus Christ, why then do we want to change what God intended for us? And that, see, that's the thing that we've got to get a hold of. That's the thing that we've got to realize. Our walk is with God. Our walk is to please God. Our walk is in the hope of God. Because I want you to know something this morning. Our world is in chaos because of sin, because of rebellion against God. God set it in motion. It wasn't rebellion then. God told us if we would live godly and if we would walk before him in godliness. I'll tell you right now, the reason we're having so much turmoil and so much trouble is that men, try to change what God has done and call it good. And that's it. And we got, to, we got to deal with that. We've got to come to the fact when we talk about men, we're talking about us. We're talking about you. We're talking about me. We're talking about them. We're talking about us. We're talking about what we've done. We have tried to alter what God said and the way of God. We try to alter it to the way of men. Our churches are full of it. You can go and see for yourself. You can go and look and hear and listen. The churches are full. I'll tell you right now, of all the houses in the community, God set aside the house of worship. He set aside the house of prayer as the greatest house in the community. I want y'all to know that, and I want you to realize that. And I didn't read yet where God changed his mind about the house of prayer. I, I haven't read yet where, where God allowed us, gave us permission to alter our, where, where we come to worship him. I don't, I'll tell you right now, but what men have done today is devise plans and trickery where they can uh, uh, bring men in masses and, and call it church. I'm telling you, we had not had church in a long time in America. We've lost our way somehow or another. I'm talking about good men doing wrong things. I'm talking about neighbors and family and friends that got caught up in, in this contemporary stuff and, and are trying to change God's way and God's work, trying to change what God has done. I'm talking about good people, folks. I'm talking about sometimes well-intentioned people. Everybody hadn't set out and, and the, that they would come as Judas written and that they would come and do this maliciousness. They didn't set out to do it, but somehow or another they got caught up in it and they have lost their way. And we today have got to talk about it. We today have got to talk about uh, how in the world we think we can change what God intended for us. How in the world do we think that God's going to sit idly by when everything that he ordained and said is good is being destroyed, not just by you and me, but by governments. And, and being destroyed by law and being destroyed by uh, the law of men. How can men change what God ordained and said it ought not to be? But it's happening all around us. It's happening. You know what happens? If you if you ever been to any of these dams, you ever been to the Hoover Dam and any of those dams? Well, they have thick walls, and those walls are engineered walls so that the water, there's great pressure behind the water. But all it would take is a little pin prick. If just one little pin prick in that wall would cause the whole wall to wash away. Hey, you've seen the commercial where the guy sticks his gum on the leaky wall. Hey, that's not a fix. And and so what happened? Uh, long ago, uh, in, in the history of, of, of our Christian movement, long ago there came a little leak in the wall and some smart aleck preacher stuck a piece of gum on it and thought that would be a fix but I want you to know something it ain't been fixed yet and the wall is broken and it's gushed now and anything goes anymore in, in the church house hello y'all know what I'm talking about you know where we're living and so we've got ourselves in a mess because of it we, we've dug a hole we can't dig ourselves out of You after a while you can dig so deep you can't throw the dirt out you don't really realize that? You, and that's exactly what's happening. We dig in a hole we can't get out of. And Jesus is going to come and say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is going to come and try to help us out of the hole we dug ourselves into. We, we, you can't do much work and service in a hole. You can't do much. You can't get, do what God wants us to do. You can't go very far when you're dug down in a hole. And sin will put you in a hole. Some man that is ordained uh, to this mischievousness will do and lead you to the wrong thing. I want you all to know something. This, this is something that, that many have laughed about and said, oh, that's not really true. But I'm telling you something. It's a mess. 
it's a mess. And I really, Brother Titus, I, I'm just going to try to ask God to help me to find my way out and to help others find their way out. And that's all I know to do. And if that's not enough, then God will come and straighten it out himself. Amen? And, and he's coming anyway. It's just a matter of when. And, and I'll tell you, the falling away is so great. We studied that the other day. Except there come a great falling away. That day will not hasten to come, but I think it's coming. Uh, because God, uh, I'll tell you, he, he, he's about had it. Uh, just from reading the Word, I know he's got to have had it. Because God, he, he didn't have much patience with Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't have much patience with Tyre and Sodom. He, I, he didn't have much patience with those people that had done what we're doing before. And I don't think God's going to have much patience with us. Amen. I don't think God's going to tolerate us very much more. I don't think God's going to uh, tolerate the local church and what she's doing much more. I think God has a plan in motion already. And if we don't repent, that plan's going to fall on us like the hammer fell on Nineveh. And, and I'm telling you, except we repent, a generation from now will not be remembered. Amen. And I believe that. I believe that the Bible teaches that. But we have altered. We've altered and tried to alter the Word of God. We, talk, we have, you know as well as I do, we have tried to all, you know, alter the word of God to make it say what we want it to say. The, and it says of itself, no scripture is given of any private interpretation. It, I mean, it can't stand alone. There's not any part of it that doesn't need the other to stand. You say, we could choose a verse out and that'd be it. Hey, we, no, it all stands together. He wrote just as much as it was supposed to be there. And then we don't need to take away, as he says in Revelation. We don't need to add to, as he says in Revelation. What we need to do is live by. You say, this is the word of God. I honor the word of God in his original language. I honor the word of God and will strive with my lifetime, with every breath, to honor God's word for the rest of my life. You see, that's the deal. And you see, Joshua said in Joshua chapter 1, that's where we find success. In the Word of God, we find success not turning to the left, not turning to the right, but finding our success straight down the path where God leads us through His Word. Amen? You see, and when we, men have tried to offer it, I'm telling you, on every level. We, we, and it's not just anyone, it's every level. Uh, people are trying to alter it because men still want to live in sin but call themselves saints. Amen? And it can't work like that, guys. It can't work. It can't work. And so if we, if we try to make it work like that, it, it we can't possibly. It only angers God. It only upsets God. And I know that some people don't like to talk uh, about themselves and uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a sad thing to have 32 Sunday school pins and go to hell. It's going to be sad to have not missed a Sunday in seven years and go to hell. It's going to be sad for self-righteousness to, to propel us to a place called hell, make us think that we are ready when we ain't ready, to make us think that's what these teachers have crept in, and that's what they have done. They have done. They have, they have brought about flesh worship instead of God worship. That's what, that's what he's talking about here. Lascivious, hey, before con this condemnation of ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, which is flesh, Telling y'all something. We're in a mess. We're in a mess today. And I, I tell you, have you ever seen a mother hen feeding the birds in her nest? You, how do them little birds react? Look here, they sense the presence of their mother. When their mother comes back, or their dad, is, for that matter of fact, with a worm, you see them around, flying around there picking up worms and bugs. When they come back, as soon as they get somewhere near that baby, that baby's mouth is wide open. Wide open. I mean, reach up their neck. Wide open. That's the way we're supposed to come to the house of God, the Sunday school, and the word of God, and have our mouth wide open. That, that God's about to feed us, and, and we're about to eat from God's table. And, hey, put your mouth wide open and stretch your neck a little bit so that God can fill you with his word. Amen. And, and so you see, uh, before the foundation of the world, God's word was already ordained. He hadn't changed a word. And so God's word. How about God's way? I mean, think about that. Think about that. Hey, you know, all of a sudden, some wise man said, uh, you, know, "You know, there's more ways than one to get to heaven. 
In fact, if you don't believe it, go out to Houston and go to church one Sunday out there at the big church. You'll hear it out there every Sunday. There's more than one way. Jesus ain't the only name whereby you must be saved, even though God's Word said it is. Hey, God's Word said there's none other name given among men whereby you must be saved. And that Jesus Christ. That's why God told, uh, sent an angel over there and told his daddy, uh, his earthly mom, and the call his name Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. There's something about that name. Call his name Yeshua. Hey, call his name Jesus. Glory be to God. And there's no other way to be saved but by Jesus. Amen. That's it. <laughs> the way Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see? Here, don't you take that whole story. Listen to this minute. Listen to this. In John 14, what have we got? We got a picture of the disciples who have just been told, I'm going somewhere. They sad. <laughs> they, and here's what they think. Look here. We, we bought into this program. Now you're going to leave us. That's what they thinking, young ones. They thinking, well, uh, look here. But Jesus, they didn't get it. Jesus is going to tell them, look here. And so they're... they're Poor in spirit, if it would be a good expression. They're poor in spirit. And they said, oh, Lord, here he is. We just started, and now he's leaving. Jesus sensed the, uh, how low they were in spirit. Jesus said unto them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Well, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Hey, that where I am, there you're going to be with me. Well, I am the way. Glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain. Let me tell you something. Thank God. Jesus is the way. And I, hey, there's no argument to it. You can't get there no other way. Son, why are you, where are you coming from? Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Hey, uh, hey, why should I let you in, Jesus? Because, hey, hey, he's, he's my Savior. Jesus. Jesus Christ lives in my heart. Oh, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives in my heart. Amen. You ask me how I know where he lives. He lives in my heart. No, you not that as many of us as were baptized were baptized into his death and many of us as are risen with him in, in baptism are risen with him in life. He lives in my heart. He's not a dead Savior. He's a living Savior and he lives in me. The way. Jesus is the way. God's word hadn't changed. The way hadn't changed. And look here. That was all determined for the foundation. You see, Israel for all those thousands of years and through those generations, Israel, I said all that time, they rebelled against God. They tried sacrifice. That didn't work. They couldn't find obedience in sacrifice. And so they got in trouble and they were persecuted. I want you to know God knew all about that. God knew that before the foundation of the world. He knew that he was going to strive and be long-suffering with them and gentle. Uh, but look here, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. The priest that they took to sacrifice to didn't do what he was supposed to do. The whole thing didn't work out the way it was supposed to. And so God said, I'll send my own son. Surely, uh, if I send him, they'll listen to him. He sent his own son. They killed him. That's why Jesus is the only way. That's why Jesus is the only sacrifice. I'll take cursed as the man that hangeth on a tree. He became cursed for us to take our curse away and to wash our sin and to cleanse us. Hey, I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the way. And he's the only way. Hey, what did I say? What God has done is done. God had done that before the foundation of the world. He put his son under a death sentence before the foundation of the world. It wasn't an afterthought. It was the thought. Amen. The thought of grace. Because the only, only thing that runs through the mind of God is the thought of salvation and grace for his creation. God did not create us to destroy us in a place called hell, Hades, or Gehenna, or whatever else you want to call it. I call it a mess and a gum and a torment place I don't want to be a part of. Hey, I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. I want to be set my feet on the solid rock, on higher ground, and rise up to meet him in the air. Whoa! Glory be to God. The way. Isn't that awesome? The way. <laughs> the word and the way. God had it all planned. Man, I'll tell you, it must have been hard planning to plan for a precious son to die for an old wretch like me. I once was lost, now I'm found. Was blind, 
but now I see. Mm, praise God. <laughs> I caught myself the other day, Brother Buck. I was just walking out, and, mm, Lord. You know, I was right by myself. Mm, you know how much I love you. Mm, Lord, I just got to going right by myself. And then I turned around and I said, man, shut up. There ain't nobody. I, I said, but God is here. God is here. Amen. Man, you can just praise the Lord anywhere you want to. You can praise the Lord anytime you want to. In the morning. In the, he said, I come in the morning. And you didn't hear me. He said, I come back at noon and you didn't hear me. I come back in the evening and you didn't hear me. So when you come back, I won't hear you. The word and the way of the Lord have not changed. I'll tell you right now. Do you? Would you buy a car? They got a program when you buy cars. What they call that program? They got to show you some kind of a statement. If it's a used car, what is that? What is it? Carfax. That's the thing. And what that Carfax tells you is uh, whether or not that thing's been wrecked, banged up, or beat up. Amen. You know what I like about the way of the Lord? You don't have to take no car facts. Because I'm going to tell you right now, he knows I've been beat up. He knows I've been banged up. He knows the devil beat up on me and left scars all over me. Hey, but the blood of Jesus washed them away, made me whole, made me clean. Whoa, hallelujah. I, mean, I don't need no car facts. I got God facts, amen. Hey, and he's going to take me because I got Jesus. Long, long, long as I got, don't need nobody else. Hey, amen. I ain't boogie. We can do what we need to do. But you see, God ain't changing. God ain't changing his way. God ain't changing his word. Let me tell you one more thing. God ain't changed his will. <laughs> amen. Listen. Jesus was praying. I believe it was John 16 or 17. Jesus was praying. Uh, see, the boys had trouble learning, uh, knowing what to pray. And so Jesus said, well, here's what you do when you need to pray. And, and so Jesus showed them how to pray. Showed them the Lord's Prayer. And that's what we call it. I don't know what he called it that or not. But it was a prayer that Jesus prayed, and he was the Lord, so I figured that would be a good title, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, but anyway, he, he, here's what he said. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Then, just a few hours before they would take him in the garden, he labored in prayer and ultimately said, don't change your will for me. This is a bitter cup, but thy will be done. See, Jesus Christ taught us that the will of God is the, is the good and perfect way. It was good enough for him. And he's a, he said, follow me. It was good enough for him, and it's good enough for us. Because the Father's will for all of us is that no man would perish, but that all men would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God is not willing that we suffer. I'll tell you, he said, if you do it to the little ones, you do it to me. Uh, God is on board and God is watching. The sparrow that falls, God sees him tumble. Hey, let me tell you something. God uh, knows the hair on a bald-headed preacher's head. I want you to know God uh, knows everything about me and everything about you. And I want I want you to understand something. God's will is that Tom Ward does not perish. How about, and I know it's for you. It's been his will the whole time. He didn't just make this up so he can allure you to come to him. It's God's will that you don't perish. It's God's will that you don't end up in a, in a bank called hell. It's God's will that you end up at, at a seat beside him at his right hand with his son. Jesus said, he belongs to me. You have given him to me. He, you have given me my sheep. I have not lost any, Jesus said. Huh? God will. I'm telling you, this stuff that's going on today, Ain't God's will, but God allows it. God's permissive will is, is unfolding before our eyes in America. I know it's bad in France. I know it's bad in Turkey. I know it's bad around the world, but it's bad in America. It's bad in America because America fell in love with sin and forsook their first love, 
which was God Almighty. They fell in love with pleasure and fell in love with the ways of men and want to change God's way, God's word, and God's will. And it ain't going to happen. In the end, God's going to gather it in. And the three W's are going to wrap us up and we'll be carried home. Amen. God's will. I'll tell you, we pray in Father, thy will be done. You really mean that. You really mean that. Fall, prostrate yourself on the floor. Man, you ain't worthy to untie his shoe latches. That's what John said. Hey, yeah, we're not worthy. I mean, there's no sandal strings. We're not even worthy to untie the strings on the man's sandal that brought salvation to us, but yet he humbled himself and took on the form of, of man and became sin for man that we would not have to die and suffer. Hey, but we're not worthy to tie his shoe latches. Huh? Let me tell you something. Don't be big-headed and high-minded and haughty. Jesus Christ is serious. The word of God is serious. The will of God, the way of God is serious, and the will of God is serious. God's not willing that we do what we do. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. Ain't it going to be bad? Is anything you do that's worth burning in hell forever? Somebody said it. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? I mean, really, what would you give? What would you get? Have you ever had sex that was good enough to burn in hell for eternity? Hey, come on, let's just get right bold and right up to the... Has it ever been that good? Well, you're going to burn in hell. It's better to marry than burn. That's what my Bible reads. Hey, you need me to show you the page? It's right there in the book. The Word of God has not changed. The will of God has not changed. Are you willing to burn? If you are, just keep it up. Just keep on up. Keep it all. What about lying? Is there a lie worth burning in hell for eternity for? For the Bible says no liar is going to be with the Lord. It's right there in the book. Is it worth it? Hey, isn't it, isn't it better for you uh, to receive God's forgiveness? And maybe uh, you might be prosecuted by man for telling the truth. But ain't it better for a little prosecution now than an eternity in hell? Ain't it better to be forgiven? Hey, is there any dope that's so good that it's worth burning in hell for? Is there a cigarette, a dip of snuff, or whatever else you hooked up on? Is it worth burning in hell for? If it is, you keep on sucking and dipping and chewing and spitting and laying around and lollygagging. You keep right on running with the world and the filth of the world, and you'll find your resting place in hell. Now, that's all I know to tell you. I ain't going to argue with you nothing about what God says. I'm not arguing you with you about it. I ain't going to do it. You remember what the little children used to sing? Listen now, y'all listen to this. Stick up here a minute, baby. I washed my hands this morning So very clean and white I lift them up to Jesus to work for him tonight. Think about that. Submit your members as instruments of righteousness unto the Lord. That's, these are instruments to be used of him. But he can only use washed hands what I'm telling you about. Little feet be careful. And I got little ones. Where you take me to? Only things for Jesus. Only let me do. You see, the word, the way, and the will is going to keep us out of the world. Hmm? Isn't that amazing stuff right there? See, that's what's going to hold you out. 
guess what's going to keep you out? We have to guard ourselves. Because listen to the text. Where's my text at? Look at, listen to the text. It says, brother, beloved. He says, I gave all diligence to write this stuff unto you. Uh, to, about the common salvation. It was need for me to write unto you because, hey, there's people in, that, that are here to, to, to deceive you. Listen. I want you to earnestly contend for faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in, unawares. Let me tell you all something. You know over there in Nice, I've been right there in Nice, France. I I laid out on the Riviera. Yeah, I did. I I went there several in the 70s. I don't remember exactly when it was, but our ship pulled in there, and I I got to go to Nice and and got to see the Riviera, and whoo! All those babes on the Riviera. Hey, y'all heard about that? They ain't no different than the babes at Myrtle Beach. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. The flesh will lead you straight to hell. Don't care if it's at Nice or Myrtle Beach. Hey, man, don't care where it is. You can show enough flesh to tempt any man. And after a while, he'll be bedding you down. And that's enough to get you in hell. Hey, say amen. That's right. Go ahead. You might as well agree with it because God ain't going to change nothing he's done. He ain't going to change nothing he's said. So whether you agree with it or not, it's going to be whether or not you pay the price. Amen. It's already done. Judgment's already passed on this stuff. Hey, God ain't going to change his mind and say, well, we got so many doing it. We might as well change up and let them have a little fun. Wrong. Wrong. He ain't going to do that. But anyhow, the will of God. Listen to me. Here's what I want us to do. I about wore out and I about preached out. Amen. Here's what I want you to do. Out there. I hope we have a this year that's worth going to watch. Amen. But used to you go out there. They were head knockers out there. They, I mean, you go out there and you hear leather popping when you got out of the car. They were out there to win the game. Christianity, Christians, I want to tell you. They need to hear the leather popping from our play. We need to be intense. We need to be built up and strong in the Lord. We need to be trained. And, man, they need to hear us coming when we before we get there. They need to know that we're on the way. Hey, because we are pumped up on Jesus. Woo, glory be to God. But let me tell you something. Uh, and what, here's what we do. Uh, you know, we, we, sometimes we need help. But here, I just found this song out. And, and I like to see the horse. I don't know who the horse was. Uh, but I like to see the horse out there, the old stallion, you know. Uh, that's about, he looks about as shabby as some of us Christians do. He don't look more like a horse than I look like a gorilla. Hey, but look here. Hey, he's out there, and, he, they, they, and he, here's the song. And they'll, they'll blast it on them over there. Get up out of that seat and jump, jump, jump. Man, I'm telling you, people get up and go to stomp in the bleacher. Whoa, get up and jump. Hey, get up and jump. I say, get up in the church and let's praise the Lord. We really love our Lord, don't we? Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Biggest bunch of phony hypocrites in the whole world is in the church. Because them people out there ain't living like they something. They living like they lost. But here's where it is in the church. We living like we want to be like Christ, but we love the world more than we love God. Amen? So here's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to have an invitation. I want you to keep these things in mind, that the word of God's not changed, the way of God's not changed, the will of God's not changed. If you're in this building today, his word says, he's not willing that any one of you should perish. He gave his son to die on the cross at Calvary. What a tremendous experience. What an emotional upheaval. If God were a man, he would have been emotionally disturbed for the rest of his life. But he's not a man. He's a spirit. And we worship him. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. But I'm telling you, God was upset about it. Because the Bible said he looked away from Christ when our sin was put on him on the cross at Calvary. Because you see, our God is so pure and so righteous and so holy, he cannot look on sin. Yeah, I'm telling you all something. God is serious about this thing called sin in your life. The wages of sin is death. That's what's drugged millions already into hell and ultimately will drag millions more if we don't listen. If we don't listen. Now listen to them. You've got to listen. Invitation is, is not an emotional moment, or it could be. Invitation is a time when we've heard the word. 
The Word of God which says, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Hey, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hey, I, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how we have this invitation. You don't just have it in the church. You have it in the Word of God. So it doesn't matter where you are. You have it in the Word of God. That whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is God's Son and that God hath raised him from the dead shall be saved. For, hey, with the mouth we confess and with the heart we believe. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I'm going to tell you something. That's what Jesus Christ is all about. That's what Jesus Christ has come for. To seek and to save the lost. That, hey, that they might be saved. For God loved the world and sent his son to the world. That the world through him might be saved. I want you to know he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that salvation may be brought to us. That's what the Bible said. But here's the condemnation. That God sent light, men love darkness more than they love the light. Therefore men perish in darkness because they rejected the light. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about many, but I do know in a lot of churches today in Columbus County, not out yonder somewhere in some perverted land, but in Columbus County, if Jesus Christ would have walked physically into the church, he would be asked to leave in some of the places because they're not into this Jesus Christ stuff. I'm telling you right now, you say, preacher, you're being ugly and hateful and hurtful. No, I'm not. And if you live long enough, you'll live it out to see how truthful the statements I'm making are. You'll live long enough to see and to know how truthful what I'm telling you this morning is. It's a bad time. It's a bad time. At God, people, we ought, you, y'all know what a meat hook is. We need to meat hook people to church. We need to plead with them, please come. Please just come and be my guest for a week or two. Just please come and, and, and share in our worship together. We really do. We need to be meat hooking people. I'm telling you, the world is. The world is, is getting them all the time. The world is dragging them deeper and deeper and deeper. I, I, I was listening, watching the news last night. I watched a boxing over there on, on Fox, whatever. I was watching that heavyweight champ, and I liked that. But the news came on, and, and they, they flashed a picture of two young men who had killed a young girl down at Myrtle Beach, and they were arrested. I thought about that. Two young men, two young men who are never probably going to get out of prison. I mean, young men. I'm talking about young men that will spend their days without freedom why would they do that they know that somebody's had to tell them that story along the way you do that you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison sometimes you will be executed if there's pre-planning first degree murder why why are we losing our young men to that folks where's your meat hook Put a meat hook in them. Drag them if you got to drag them. But please uh, teach them the word of God. He can deliver them, not after the fact. He can deliver them. We got to work. We can't quit. We got to go. We can't. All our vices and all that mess has got to leave us. Hey, too many are being taken too soon. I got a prayer request this morning. 22-year-old is dead. Requesting prayer. Uh, I tell you people, it's just, I don't know. I really don't know. Lord, Jesus gave his life. He gave his life for all mankind. But could we be willing to give our life for a few? Not in a sense where we hang on a cross, but in a sense where we're willing to Give up our time. Give up our way in order that we can win some. Maybe we might have to drive over town there and mess up our new car to get a a child to get them to bring them to church. Listen to me, guys. That's what I'm talking about. That's the will of God. That's the way of God. That's the word of God. Let me tell you all something. God, what God has done is done. It's done. No sign of turning in him. So I want to ask you. Who's playing tonight? I want to ask you, would you be willing 
to have a, a communication with God today? Is it number one? Is He talking to you? He's, I'm telling you, He spoke through this message. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it? Boy, twenty-eight years old, nineteen seventy-one, when the Lord saved my soul. I never won nobody to Jesus. I never talked much about Jesus except to cuss him, use his name in vain. He told me. He said, Tom, I love you. My mama told me, son, Jesus loves you. I'm so glad I got saved on Mother's Day. Brother Titus, that's the best gift I've ever given Mama or Jesus ever given. We didn't have cell phones back then, but I called her and I said, Mama, happy Mother's Day. I said, I just had to tell you, had to call and tell you, I got saved this morning. Didn't hear nothing for a long time. I'm talking about literacy. <laughs> That's all you could hear. 28 years, guys. Some of you are far younger than 28 years. Others of you may be a few days older. But this, I'm not, these statistics don't matter a hilt to me. You can be saved any time that God calls you and you believe. I'm telling you that right now. I don't care if you're 140 or if you're 14. God will save you. You ain't run out yet. And I just want you to humble your heart this morning. Just let the Lord, just let the Lord fetter around in your heart and feel your need today. It's God's will for you. So I want to ask you to stand and I want you to come. Just as you are. You just come right on. Don't matter. We got all day long. 